All right, so we are back again. If you are watching this, you've probably been watching a few of them by now. So remember to like and subscribe. But the guest that we have on today, I hope you're ready. Let's go. Yes, Bonnie. So how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Uh, just out of curiosity, is this the first podcast that you've been on? It is the first podcast Easy. I've done, yeah. You know what I love about this? Yeah. There's quite a lot of people that come onto this podcast that have never done a podcast before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously it's your first time on here. Yeah. yeah. Are you nervous or not? No, I'm actually okay. And have you done like camera work before? Or? I actually went to drama school. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I went to drama school, wanted to be an actor. Swear. <laughs> Cleaning on actor. How's that going? But it's not going the way it is. <laughs> However, it gave me some good good life skills. So like confidence, okay. talking on stage, like public speaking, cameras. It doesn't really bother me too much. So have so. you done like any acting roles outside of? Not really outside of school. When I was in school, we did like loads of shows. We did like Alice in Wonderland. Like we did like Shakespeare Mad. shows, stuff like Mad. that. Yeah, it was really, it was really cool actually, the shows that we did. How do you find the Shakespeare lingo? You know what? I'm not going to lie. I struggle with it. Do you? But only because I'm such a brummie. Mad. <laughs> so like, it just, because I'm not the, I wouldn't say I'm not well-spoken, but like, I just clearly have a strong Birmingham accent. Sometimes Shakespeare coming out of my accent. There's Do you remember anything about words. like Shakespeare words? Or... Oh God, no. Nothing? Only probably like the most common one. Like, What's that? To be or not to be. <laughs> is that Shakespeare said that? Yeah, that no. is the question. Did he actually? Yeah. Mad. No, I, didn't, I wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> Talking about your grammar, remember when I was correcting your uh, sentences? Yeah. Uh, let's not talk about grammar. Okay. To be fair, I can't really say that much. I always get there, there, there wrong. Yeah. Do you understand it? Yeah. Okay, explain I went it. to school. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is, this, is this how that podcast is going to go? No, I'm joking. That, I'm just playing. No, no, no. Is that how today's going to go? This is how today's going to go? If that's the energy you want to come in, yeah. Like, I don't mind. We can go bar for bar. Nah. We can go Ooh, bar for bar. We're nice and friendly. We'll have a choose for today. So can you explain there, there, there? Yeah. So there. Mm -hmm. with how, which the, one? With the they, R-E. Yeah, is they it's are. like they are. Okay. So they are there. They are going to the park. Yeah, they are going to yeah. be, okay. There with the T-H-E-I-R uh -huh. is like personal, like their, that's, that's their, their clothes. Their, okay. their clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then T-H-E-R-E, you're testing my spelling here. That one is like over there. The tree, the park is over there. Oh, so it's not a person? No. It's an object? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Is that how we... Okay, let's just move past this. So... Bonnie, obviously, I know a little bit about you, okay? Yeah. Obviously, you've obviously just started working at JD Gym Albury. Yeah. The strongest club of JD right now with the most experienced trainers that there can be. Like, tell the people about you, though. Okay, so, obviously, I'm Bonnie. Yeah. I'm 24. Okay. And I'm from Birmingham. I grew up in Great Bar. Grew up in pubs. So, like, we moved around, like, Great Bar and West Bar and Reedy. Um, and then for me personally, like growing up, I was never really into fitness, actually, like was kind of the girl that would hide from PA. Mad. Yeah. Maybe like a rounders game, but, and like, a, like I was in gymnastics and stuff like that, but actually like netball, no cross country. Oh my goodness. Couldn't think of anything worse. Than why why do you think that was? Um, I don't know. We were just not really pushed. I don't think to to get into sports I didn't really enjoy it that much at the time and also like I always struggled with like food and weight fluctuating so like exercise was just difficult yeah. back then I suppose that's probably why I didn't enjoy it as much at what age did you identify that oh I was young I think I suffered from like body image and food probably from like the ages of like 13 wow. 14 yeah yeah. That that was a thing at your age yeah, of 13? Yeah, that was the only thing that consumed my whole, like, teenage years growing up. So you battled that? Yeah. From the age of 13? Yeah. And how was that fight? Oh, well, I was never on the winning team, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, no, it was tough. It was tough. I think only as I got, like, older and, like, matured did I... Probably realise, one, there's more to life, and two, realise how to deal with it a lot better. But when I, like, you're so young at that age, you don't even understand the world, really. So trying to understand such a mature topic mm -hmm. at such an immature age was, like, really difficult. 
it's massive that is and i think that's even would you even put an age on maturity really because there's a lot of adults like when i work with clients a lot of them from a perspective of maturity like they still don't know how to cook yeah so there's not really an age yeah no that you reach that you then become mature society will give us that but unless you're working on yourself like you have to work on yourself to learn how to cook. Of course. It isn't just going to drop from the sky and you inherit that at the age of 30. Yeah. So there's a, a process of working on yourself that has to happen. And, you know, at the age of 13, you were still working on yourself. Um, so I agree with that element of things where we struggle at that age of 13, but it's still a process that you had to go through to be the person that you are right now. Was there like anyone else around you that had that same fight? No, not no one. No one really understood it as well I was kind of it's really strange because I was always a really confident child so you would always hear me before you saw me I had no problem like talking to people getting up on stage all throughout my childhood but confidence in myself I had none so it's like I overcompensated for being confident maybe with my like uh, personality and things like that but like I would never talk to anybody about it I remember like I just used to cry all the time and my mom my sisters would try and say to me like what's wrong I just say I'm not telling you yeah. that's but it's such an immature response but she said I'm not telling you I'm not telling you what's wrong like yeah. it's but I just thought no one no one would really understand that that bit there there has to be a level of trust in it mm. and until you've gained that level of trust with somebody you're not willing to exchange what you have yeah. because of how that can be perceived like I, I had my godchildren in here the other day and um Tegan had done something like something very small I brought up a bottle um, and she like, literally touched it but I didn't know that she did that and I said to her what's the matter and I could just tell from her behavior that something wasn't she's like nothing 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 I was like Tegan what's the matter <laughs> and it's only when I says I don't mind what you've done. Yeah. Then she then says in her crying voice, oh, 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 I've touched your bottle. But because she built that level of trust with me yeah. and she knew what the consequence was of her action, she knew that she could then share that information with me. And I think in society right now, like people haven't built enough trust in other people to share. Yeah. It's very easy for like, when I jump onto social media every day, I see somebody talking about something else that they could just go to somebody and talk to about, but they're not willing to do yeah. that. And this is where we are at in life. Really. I think the hardest part is to talk about it. Why do you think that is? I don't know. But I think I think trying to get somebody to understand when you almost don't understand your own feelings towards it is really difficult. So I think that's the problem, trying to explain. I mean, I was like, 13, I'd say, is when it started. I'd say 15, 16 was when it was at its prime. And me, What was it like at its prime? Oh, it was just... Walk me through that process. Because like, there's going to be people watching this now that can resonate with exactly what you're saying right yeah. now. Yeah. So my relationship with food was terrible. was absolutely terrible. Every, like... The, for me, there was good foods and there was bad foods. And it was just one extreme to the other. So, for example, I would, like, try and starve myself all day. I look. It's really funny because I look back at pictures now and I think... What was even wrong with you? You know, you hadn't even hit puberty yet. You know, okay, you weren't stick thin up and down, but I definitely wasn't massive by any means. But I just used to think that I was huge, like absolutely huge. And I just used to think that I looked disgusting. So trying to explain to somebody that you hate yourself so much that you don't even want people to see you is just like really hard. So it started probably with my relationship with food. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, I'd either starve myself all day, but then you'd come home and then you'd feel like you're about to pass out. So you'd get your hands on anything that you could get. So then it would be like a binge eating cycle. So then like it was just constant. Then you'd feel like complete food guilt and you just, I'd literally just sit in my room and cry, trying to buy clothes. That was another thing, like trying to go shopping. I remember one Christmas, um, I was, I was only going around to my sister's house, but my family dresses up for Christmas dinner. Yeah. And I was literally in my room. And have you watched White Chicks? Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> it was literally, you know, the scene in White Chicks when she's having a breakdown in the yeah. changing room? That was me and my mum. So I was in my room and my mum was running in with anything she could find me, like, try this, try this, try that. And I was literally just on the floor crying my eyeballs out. Like, it's just, it's so, it's so, like, difficult to explain because... Yeah. I just, I just hated the way that I looked so much. And it's 
silly because I suppose the simple thing then would have been we'll do something about it. But I think diet culture then back then was so bad anyway. It's not like it is today. So it was like, I thought I was doing something about it by like starving myself. I literally, and like my friends were quite slim. Um, and I say slim, I wasn't big, but they were, they were very, very yeah. petite girls. Um, that was a visible difference. Yeah, like, so I always felt like the bigger friend or whatnot. And did, did anyone say that to you? No, never. So no one at this point? No, no, one's, no, no one says, and yeah. like, this was all my own brain. Like, and that's what's crazy about how toxic we can be to ourselves because no one had been saying, you know, you're fat, you need to lose weight. Don't get me wrong. Like when I was growing up, there was little comments um, just about like, you know, you need to just stop eating yeah. chocolate and crisps or, but no one was literally saying you are. Yeah. No, like, one, no one was bullying you. Yeah. No that. one was, no, yeah. never. That, to see that internal fight. Yeah. That's the worst fight yeah. you can have. But food was just, I was so conscious about what I ate in front of people. Mm. So then that's when secret eating happens yeah. when you're like scared to eat in front of people or. So did you like have like a, a, a drawer of food or anything that was hidden? In, secret food like did you no 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 I never had a drink we weren't allowed to be fair like yeah. we had like a, a sweet and chocolate cupboard but in my house you asked like you had to eat your whole dinner and then you asked for like something after like a sweet treat after so it wasn't really like that um I suppose when when I was older and I started earning money that was when it was easier to obviously indulge a little bit and buy my own food but like it, I think again going back to like the foods are so bad like if I say I really wanted a chocolate bar I would <laughs> It's going to sound crazy, but I would chew the chocolate bar so that like I had the taste of Mad. the chocolate bar in my mouth and then I would spit it out Mad. in my bin. Yeah. Mad. And, and that was, did you see someone else do that? Or did you no, just, I just did And what, what did you gain from that? Nothing. Nothing. So I was still, still hungry. Like I was still, the craving didn't go away, but I just didn't, I just didn't want to eat. I didn't want to swallow it. It's, it's crazy, like, because that's a different level of self control if you yeah. do it. Because you've not only wanted something, you've then put it in your mouth, mm -hmm. you've chewed it, and then instead of swallowing it, you spit it out. Yeah. I don't know if that's a diet hack, you know. <laughs> that could actually be <laughs> a diet hack. One. If you're yeah. craving it, just have you a crave little it. You crave it, chew a little bit of it, and then spit it, just in the spit it out. <laughs> like, yeah, now nah, we won't be publicizing that one. But it's. It's, it's, it's interesting to see the fight that you had at such a young age. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was really difficult and I couldn't explain it to people. And people would say to me like, but you're such a pretty girl or, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with you or whatnot. But I, it didn't matter. The whole world could have told me I was beautiful. The whole world could have said I was a model would have made no difference in my own brain. None at all. I couldn't look at photos of myself. I used to dread like, going out or like you know if, even when I got a bit older and I started going out to parties and things like that if I looked in the mirror and I, and I didn't like what I saw I'd go home really? yeah and it's so so silly because there's so much more to life than mm. than how you just look at yourself not feeling or, good enough in it yeah is that a trait that you have just for or had just for food or is that a trait that you have no I, I am my worst enemy when it comes to like not feeling good enough and not feeling like I'm doing enough. And now I think as I've got older and I'm obviously pursuing a career that I really enjoy and want to get into, like I've learned to flip it a little bit and see the positive sides of not feeling like you're doing good enough because it means that you're always going to push further. It means that you're always going to try harder, but it's about finding a balance of doing that and not being so hard on yourself that you're running yourself into the ground. It's a very fine balance. Mm -hmm. It's like, a real fine line. Yeah, like a lot of people think that, a lot of people think that using negative energy, because that's ultimately what it yeah. is, as a fuel to be better is the way forward, yeah. actually. It's, but negativity just breeds negativity. That's all it is. So, and I'm not spiritual by any yeah. means, but I do believe that what you put out, you get back. Yeah. So I feel like if you're constantly giving out negative energy, it's just like when you wake up, you're in a bad mood, you're late for work, then you get out and your car's got no petrol in it, oh, yeah. I need to go and get petrol. Then there's traffic. Then there's traffic. Then you hit every single red light. Yeah. But if you'd have actually got up that morning, like in enough time calmly and said, you know, I'm grateful to be up today. Mm -hmm. Like, and then your day just plans out so differently. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not really spiritual, but I do definitely believe in energies. And I think it's important to try and be positive if that's what you want to receive back. Obviously, like we, we know that you're new to JD, yeah. but like what made you go from drama school 
to be in a cult? Like, what, what was the pinnacle thing for you? I'll be real. I was at rock bottom, like rock bottom, like mentally. I didn't even know if it was going to get any better. And it did because of the gym and because of fitness. And for me, if I'd have had the service that I'm providing people when I was 15, let's say, I could have avoided this whole thing. And I could have really enjoyed my teen the rest of my teenage years rather than constantly a shadow in the back, like just making me feel horrible all the time and me hating myself. So for me, like it's my responsibility to help women get over it the same way, the same way that I got myself out of this situation. I want to help everybody else do the same because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And so many of us are going through the same things and feel like there's no one there to help. And there is, you just have to reach out and get the help. There's so many people. And I want to be one of those people. I want to make women feel strong and feel sexy and feel good in themselves. And I don't want them to wake up the way that I did and look in the mirror and hate themselves every day because life is way too short to have that kind of mentality. I look back and I think so many things and events that happened I wasn't even present for because I was worrying about the way that I looked or because I thought I was going to look fat on a photo. But actually, not only is it the physical change that you need to make, it's the mental one. And it's the change in the mentality. And the gym, I don't care what anybody says, is the best form of therapy. Full stop. I could just drop the mic right now. <laughs> I feel like podcasts are done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> done, baby. Done. You know, what's, you know what's really inspiring to see? That at such a young age of a coach, that there's still people that want to help people. Yeah. Like, that genuinely want to. And we can see that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I see that every day. Like, I work with you. Yeah. So I already know that you're going to be great. These people just need to know that yeah. too. Do you understand? Because there's a lot of people out here that need your help. It's not even a want, Bunny. Yeah. It's it's a need. Because a society now, we look at, every time I open up my phone on any social platforms, all I'm seeing is this BBL, this. I'm seeing this operation, this. Yeah. I'm seeing this person doing this maddest diet. I'm seeing Eddie Ab Abu oh. doing the next maddest thing. Like literally there is so much confusion now. Yeah. There has to be people that will say, stop listening to this rubbish. And this is the way that you need to do it. A hundred percent. And I'm not saying it's not difficult for men. It 100% is. And men have their own struggles. But women, we are expected to look a certain type of way, talk a certain type of way, carry ourselves. As it's draining to know what to do. One minute it's be as skinny as possible and carbs are bad and look like a monster. Model. then it's be as curvy as possible and have a Kim Kardashian body like what are we supposed to do like I want to encourage women to be healthy and to be strong because having been like so skinny or being so curvy and having all this surgery exactly this it's not that's not like what, what does it actually yeah, mean it means nothing it amounts to absolute nothing, nothing. like I, I had a client today called Sammy and I was reflecting with her about this three-year journey so far. And I said, Sammy, like, you need to remember where you've come from. You come from a point where you physically wasn't strong enough to even lift mm -hmm. the bar. How are you going to be practical in day-to-day -day life? Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. So you can chase being in the best shape of your life. That doesn't mean that it's best for your yeah. life. And, and now she's at a point where she is the strongest she's ever been, the lightest she's been in years, and by far the happiest yeah. that she's been. When we speak about fitness and we speak about coaches, put that respect on it. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, it's not, it's not a PT session. It's not just a coach. It's a whole lifestyle change that you've got to be ready to make. And once you are, or once you realise you are with the right guidance, your life will change. The and you'll have thing. A, such a different perspective on everything. Because it's not just about, I've got to go to the gym. No, you haven't got to go. You get to go. You get to go. You get to Oi. get up in the morning Oi. and move your body. This is so many mic drops right yeah. here. Yeah, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. The only people are out here now that wish they were able to do what yeah. we're doing today. And they, because of their illness or because of like, uh, even some of my clients, like they have certain injury or illnesses. And when they're with me in that session, they're like so happy. And even outside of that session. So when I, when I think about people complaining about, I've got to go to the gym, dude, you get the opportunity. Yeah. Like what you do with that, that's on you. Yeah. And the thing that we live in now is there's too much choices. Yeah. 
and there's not enough people making any choices. 100%. Whether that's male, female, across the board, there is not enough people making choices because humanity is now spoiled. Yeah, 100%. It's, you know, it's such a privilege. You get to move and no one's telling you in what type of way you have to move. You don't have to be a bodybuilder. You don't have to do a high rocks. You find there's so many so aspects many. of fitness. Find your niche, find what you enjoy. When I first got into fitness, I got in through running. Love that. You know, that was how I started. Now, you know, don't mind running. <laughs> definitely not. But, you know, no, the weight section is definitely my home. <laughs> but you know, you find it along the way. And it's just, you know, I always hear it all the time. I haven't got any energy. I'm tired. I haven't got any time. First of all, energy breeds energy. Yeah, come on. So you think that you're sitting on the sofa, watching the telly. Like, where I'm are you tired. going with that? I haven't got any energy. Where are you going with that? Get up and you'll have some Get energy. Get up and move. Move your body. Like your body needs to be moving. Yeah. Or I don't have time, but you spent an hour watching Love Island. Like, you know, for me, we all love a good show. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm addicted to The Handmaid's Tale at the moment. <laughs> so you know what I do? Watch Put on the stepper. Put it on my phone. Got my earphones in. Watch it on the stepper. There we go. There we go. Cardio's done for the day. Tick two. two. Tick two boxes off my list. But Do whatever you want to do, you will make time. Yeah. So I'm a massive believer in that. And ultimately, when I look at somebody and they come to me and they're out of shape and they've got this pain and that pain, they went through a process of time where they wanted to be more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is the longer that you stay in this comfort zone, you then are doing things that are detrimental yeah. to your body. Your body requires you to move. Like, I don't know if people have ever had a dog and they've not walked it. Yeah, and they go crazy. They go crazy. They're going insane. They're going insane. Yeah. And then at one point after so many weeks or months or years that they then walk it, the dog doesn't want to go anywhere yeah. because you have given this dog this level of comfort that it's now spoiled. Mm -hmm. But it requires you to move with it every day. Of course. The behavior habits of people right now are too comfortable. Definitely. And this comfort thing that people are in right now is going to be detrimental to them and their knees and their back and their body weight and their body fat for the rest of their life. Yeah. Nothing amazing is made in a comfort zone. No. Nothing. You know, how are diamonds made? Yeah. Under pressure. Come on, like you've got, it's got to be hard. Anything worth having is difficult. But I always say, I say to my clients, I say to everybody, pick your hard because life is hard no matter what happened that you, you go down. So you either have a hard life for the rest of your life or you spend the first three months of your fitness journey and it's so difficult and yes, it's uncomfortable and yes, you're out of breath all the time and it's horrible, but then actually three months you think okay i'm fitter yeah. actually i'm not struggling to breathe I'm stronger actually i'm stronger people are complimenting me yeah i look good my clothes are fitting I different feel good. i always say when people say to me it's hard to you know diet or or it's hard to go to the gym i say well believe me it's hard to look in the mirror every single day and hate yourself and i can tell you that for a fact so pick your heart i'm i'm intrigued to know like, how old are you right now, sir? I'm 24. So you're 24 years of age. That's nine years older than when you were 15, yeah? Good maths. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell the 15-year-old version of yourself that looks in the mirror every day and says, I hate myself, that goes to school and doesn't eat, starves herself? What would you tell that, Bonnie? You know what? I would actually, I would say thank you. I would say thank you so much for teaching me everything I need to know so that I can help thousands of women that once felt like that 15 year old girl or still do feel like that 15 year old girl. That's mad. That, that is mad. Yeah. I wouldn't take it back. You know, it was tough, definitely, but I wouldn't be who I am today without her. And I wouldn't be able to help other people, which is the whole reason I became a PT in the first place. So I'd just say thank you. And I'd tell her that it's gonna get better. It is. The same way I would tell all my clients that it's gonna get better. Because you did. Because it did for me.